Hello class and welcome to week three of Abnormal Psychology. This lecture video will serve the purpose as to reviewing your week three activities. By now you should have all your week two work completed um, and I have graded you guys, your guys' um, first essay. So if you have any questions or comments or concerns about that, please feel free to reach out to me and I can provide um, further feedback for that. So with that being said, let's jump right into the material. So for this week, you'll need to read chapters five and six of Abnormal Psychology. Um, and we'll probably touch on a little bit this week, but my, of course my main focus for this week is your essay that will be due. So your chapter five will be stress and trauma related disorders. And chapter six will be mainly over anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorders. So both interesting topics for this week. And of course you'll have a discussion board post with no less than 250 words and responding to two of your classmates. You guys have been doing a really great job on your discussion board post, so I do want to commend you for that. I'm enjoying um, reading your, your thoughts and how you feel about the, the material. Um, so following that, you have a video clip of PTSD, um, and it's def definitely interesting um, for you guys to check out, so I want you to check that out. And then, of course, you'll have your essay number two. So the main purpose of this essay is to explore, um, you know, influential factors and various factors of obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, so you'll talk about, you know, biological and in environmental research and things like that. And you'll also offer a faith perspective component on this disorder. This essay, of course, course is worth 100 points. And it's similar to the first essay that you guys had. Um, however, it's on a different topic. Um, so you'll have your introduction your paragraph um, where you'll briefly introduce your topic using citations when necessary. Um, and of course, you'll outline what will be covered in the paper. And I do also want to say from the first week's essay, you guys did a great job of doing your introductions and introducing the topic and how I expressed how I wanted things from the one, week one uh, overview. So I really appreciate seeing all the feedback that I gave on the lecture video uh, applied to the paper. So it just shows me that you guys are listening um, and you're understanding what I'm looking for. So that's great. So, and you'll see that everyone did uh, an amazing job on uh, the paper. So if you guys just keep that up, you'll do continue to do the same thing um, for your following assignments. Um, so you'll also need, of course, a literature review section. I do want to comment on this part. Um, a lot of you um, did a great job on your literature review section, but I do encourage you guys to make sure that you're discussing all the topics that are included in this section here so you're not losing any points. I know I may have docked some, you know, four or five points uh, for uh, not having enough thorough information or um, you missing um, a component of this section um, thoroughly. So just be sure that you are um, reading each prompt and answering all the questions and addressing all the factors that I'm looking for. Um, so that was my only caveat on that. Um, okay, so you'll need a biological and genetic component. So you'll address at least two peer-reviewed sources um, and discuss how genetic factors have been identified in you know the development or um, the maintenance of obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, and you'll talk about you know biological factors and how they influence OCD as well as uh, maybe some environmental factors um, that. Um, contribute uh, to that and that's uh, the second com component so you'll also need two period resources for that section as well and talk about um, the environmental factors in terms of um, how someone grew up maybe their social circles um, their communities things like that how that may play a role in the development of OCD um, or even you know experiences that may they may have maybe um, they've had a death in the family or um, they've been in a car accident. Um, there's a lot of things that contribute to obsessive compulsive disorder and I'll talk a little bit about that. But just thinking in terms of how of clients that I've had in the past, um, uh, one of my clients, um, her mom passed away from cancer. Um, so she was definitely afraid of um, getting cancer and it became obsessive component and she hated the hospitals as well. Um, so those things can definitely de develop into um, a more serious um, event. Traumatic experiences can develop into um, uh, 
Um, so, of course, your paper must be three to four pages in length. I do want to comment on that, too, as well. Some of you had two and a half pages. I do check the lengths and making sure that you guys are writing uh, as much um, as possible. Um, and don't worry if you do go over the page four limit. That's fine. Uh, as long as you're, you're able to articulate and express all the key points, um, the, if you have over four pages, that does not bother me. Um, but if you have under three, then that's where I get kind of suspicious because you, it's hard for you to address all the key points in thorough detail um, if it's not three pages or more. Um, so, of course, you'll have your APA formatted. You guys did a great job on APA formatted. Uh, one thing I do want to address is remember that running head on the title page is only on the first page. Um, so remember to include that only on the first page. It does not carry through. I saw a couple of those um, in I'm sure I made a uh, notation about it, so you know that. Um, of course, subheaders. Every single one of you included subheaders, so I'm very thankful of that. And it helps, like I said, it helps with the flow. Um, it just lets me know that you guys are listening, so I really do appreciate that. Um, and, of course, a minimum of four peer review sources. So that's going to be a little more than what we did last time. Um, the textbook, however, on this assignment will not be counted towards your minimum of four. So I'm looking to see if you are using the textbook as a source, I'm looking to see five sources for this assignment. So you'll have, um, you know, four peer reviewed journal articles from the library or uh, Google Scholar or something like that. Um, and also your textbook. So that'll be five um, peer reviewed sources uh, on your reference page. So just be aware of that. So you aren't losing any points for that. And as I mentioned before, this is the rubric. This is exactly what I follow. So if you follow this, you will do perfectly fine. So let's jump right into some of the material. Like I mentioned before, I don't want to spend too much time on um, discussing some key components of, components of this because you guys need to focus on your uh, paper for this week. So let me see. So I won't spend too much time. Of course, I'll talk a little bit more on the OCD section. Um, but just to touch on a few topics for your um, material this week. So, of course, chapter five is over stress and trauma related disorders. And how we, as, as we mentioned before, stress and trauma has a huge impact on the, the development of um, mental health issues and disorders and things like that. Um, so just thinking in terms of how the DSM is categorized, um, access Within the accesses, the stress-related and trauma are considered, um, I guess, beginning factors to uh, disorders and things like that. So, of course, stress, um, there's many areas of stress, whether that's work-related stress, familial-related stress, relationship-related uh, stress, uh, financial stress. There's so many factors to think about in terms of stress and how um, they eventually you know play an impact on our mental health um so there's a few areas of um stressors i, I would say um so the nature of the stressor and their severity and how people specific people respond to them so when it comes to their reaction towards stress you've got to think of of course the context of what these stress is all about the intensity of of how stress that person is, the frequency, how often does it occur, um, and the predictability and control. And I think that a lot of the times when I was in, um, in, that, in the master's program at CBU, we talked a lot about um, managing our stress and being able to um, know our own personal stressors. So I do challenge you guys to know what your own personal stressors are. And whenever you are noticing around this time around exam time i get a little bit a bit of anxiety um around certain specific times in your life how you handle stress and that speaks to the predictability and control because once you figure out what your stressors are and how often they occur and what is the context behind it and how frequent they are and how severe they are is when you you'll be able to to make maintain monitor and control that level of stress so it doesn't turn into a big ordeal and cause trauma uh, in your own personal life so let me 
me see. So, and speaking of terms of stress too, I uh, was watching uh, uh, an interview this weekend and they were talking about how, you know, the stress caused, um, you know, uh, a lack of immune functioning. So they were, their body was shutting down because of all the stress that was going on. And, and, and it speaks to the current time that we're in right now with COVID and uh, all the things that are going on in the world. Finding that specific time in your life to, to de-stress, to have whether that's, you know, your 30 minute workout in the morning, having your own specific me time. Um, so you aren't creating a, a stressful environment for your body to where um, your immune system and your functioning is lacking. Um, and a lot of times when we talk about mental health and stress related disorders, um, we talk about how their that person's immune system is compromised. So um, because of prolonged chronic and stress, uh, so you'll have um, some people have taste aversion. Some people have, um, you know, panic attacks and uh, different things like that. So just thinking in terms of how stress has an impact over your own physical being is is paramount in maintaining and ensuring that you are managing your stress levels. Um, and not just you, but if you are planning to go in the psychology field, your clients and, and even family members. Um, so... It's definitely important to, to note that stress does have an impact on your whole uh, physical well-being. And of course, there's a couple of crash course videos for you guys to watch um, throughout the PowerPoint of emotions, stress, and health. I love those crash course videos because it just gives you a, a, a broad amount of information in a short period amount of time and understanding a way that um, will help you to process the information. Um, so when we talk about stress, we think about how coping with that stress so we talked about um you know how i mentioned the 30 minutes of exercise so relaxation um, meditation exercise things like that are also um helpful for you to manage your stress so it won't contribute to an, an illness or develop a, a disorder over time um let's see is there anything else i want to talk about for this slide um, of course trauma related stressors when we think about ptsd um, and also, um, I believe postpartum is in that realm of trauma related stressors too, as well. Um, the bereavement, death of a family member, things like that are all contributed to stress. And we talk a lot about PTSD when it terms, in terms it comes to veterans, um, too, but also think about how, um, not only veterans, but, you know, civilians, how 9-11 impacted so many, how, um, you know, different things like that. We all have an area where we can develop PTSD. It's not just synonymous with veterans. I think it's with um, any traumatic experience that someone may may witness or see can cause this um, traumatic or PTSD to develop. Um, so when we talk about stress, of course, we talk about therapies and things like that. CBT is one of the major therapeutic I want to say modalities that uh, people use because it's most effective for um, stress, depression, um, anxiety, and things like that. Because um, it helps you to monitor, you know, your stress management. And we talked about how uh, finding those, um, the uh, how to predict your stresses and things like that. So it talks about stress management, um, and also you flood your mind with um, positive thoughts, positive feedback, uh, positive affirmations, things like that. And you prevent, of course, re-exposure to the stressor and trauma. Um, but, of course, there's also other uh, areas of focus. A new, I'm going to touch on eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. This is a new area of uh, modality um, where it's, an, and a lot of um, clinicians use this for, of course, PTSD and things like that. But it, it uses eye movement in order to, to reprocess and retrain um, your brain and desensitize it to that traumatic experience. So it's definitely an interesting um, therapeutic technique. So if you want to look that up, please do. It's very interesting. Um, and of course, you, you can use uh, medication. I personally am not a huge fan of medication. I believe that um, this is my own personal preference. Um, and you'll, I'm sure that many clinicians may agree or disagree. Um, but I, of course, I've always been the uh, more holistic 
um, type of therapist in terms of treating mental health and things like that. Of course, whenever you have severe mental health issues like schizophrenia, that cannot be treated with holistic care, um, let's be honest. But um, for certain things, um, and if you have um, severe major depressive, depression, um, that cannot be treated without medication. Um, so I do have some exceptions to that rule, but I also feel like um, some most a lot of things can be treated with um, holistic approaches, and that's you know um, rest, relaxation, meditation, exercise, um, cognitive restructuring, um, and things like that. Um, okay, so attachment disorder. And throughout the chapter, you'll talk about a couple of, of you know, stress stress related uh, disorders and things like that. So you'll have a, a more thorough discussion on that. But that's all I wanted to talk to you about for chapter five. So let's jump into chapter six really quickly. And I know I'm moving rather quickly because, I, but as I mentioned before, I don't want to spend too much time because um, you guys do have that essay to complete. And I do want to touch on just a few areas of um, this. Uh, PowerPoint, uh, PowerPoint. So this chapter is very interesting. I, I do encourage you to watch this video of OCD and anxiety disorders because um, it does provide, um, um, I guess, a scenario on how a panic attack on live TV will occur. Um, so it's just definitely um, interesting to watch. And there's another one on OCD and anxiety um, if you want to watch that one as well. It's a crash course video. So, panic disorder, agoraphobia, and agoraphobia is very um, interesting. I know we talk a lot about how Paula Dean, if you don't know who that is, she's um, you know an amazing chef. Um, she suffered from agoraphobia. So, when we're speaking in terms of anxiety disorder, you know, there's uh, panic panic disorder um, and things like that, and social anxiety disorder. But we talk about how this is a um, an Kind of like an add-on to anxiety um so of course there's social anxiety disorder where people are scared to be in social settings um and things like that um, but agoraphobia is on top of being in social settings but it's it's um this person is finding it difficult to even leave their home um so they're they have anxiety about being in places and situations from which they can't escape and a lot of times those stressors um um lead them to staying at home and not being able to leave their home. So that's definitely um, an interesting um, disorder. Um, okay, so of course you'll talk about treatment and things like that, specific phobia, and you'll, like I said, you'll, you'll read a lot about these disorders. But I do want to hop on to OCD because that is where your, um, a, a, your essay will be discussed about. Um, so of course, OCD is, uh, this person is um, obsessed with compulsions um, and possible um, compulsive um, activities, I want to say. So there's many causes, of course, genetics, um, trauma, things like that. Um, so you'll read more about that in your um, chapter. Um, but of course, the treatments for it is antidepressants and, um, of course, other other forms of therapy. Um, I think the main whenever I practice in Princeton House, when we treat patients with OCD, we focus on I think DBT and CBT were the main areas of focus in terms of therapy. Um, so a lot of times people hear about hoarding um, and that's there's a whole TV show about hoarding um, and that is a form of OCD as well. Um, hair pulling, I've seen this in the clinical setting um, and even um, uh, pika um, picking at different maybe you know eating um, pillow cushions, picking at a wall and eating it there's that's an OCD thing as well. Um, and skin picking. I've never seen this one in a clinical setting, but I've heard of it uh, as well. Um, and there's a lot of OCD related disorders that are substance use um, or medication induced um, 
or they're from another medical condition um, and things like that. Um, and overall, anxiety disorders are amongst the one of the most common DSM diagnosis. Um, so just think about in terms of your personal life, how many people do you know with anxiety? Um, there's so many. The other day, me and my husband were watching Below Deck and um, reruns of Below Deck, and one of the the girls on the show suffer from anxiety. It's so often and commonly um, heard of, so I'm sure that you guys have um, some idea or notion of what anxiety is. And I believe that is pretty much it. Um, like I mentioned before, I really wanted to keep it short. Um, and I really encourage you guys to dig deep into the material this week so you are prepared for your essay. But also just to get an understanding of the, uh, the multiple anxiety disorders and things like that, that a lot of these disorders and mental health issues are considered quote unquote um, abnormal and how that relates to the worldview of abnormal and uh, normal behavior. Um, so yeah, I think that's my takeaway for this week and I hope you guys had a great week. Um, and then please, if you have any questions about the material, about the essay, um, please, I beg you to please reach out to me. I am a, I'm definitely an open book and I know the students that have reached out to me in the past have, um, have great confidence in reaching out to me. So I do encourage you all. I look forward to hearing from you. And if you have any questions, like I said before, please feel free to reach out to me and have a great week.